guys, uh, so I have a haul for you. Um, so many of you, uh, well, some of you may have heard that um, Jason at Old Booth Chapter and Verse and Kelly at uh, Books I'm Not Reading are engaging in a sort of um, project next year, a reading project um, called A Year of Reading One's Own, um, where they uh, read only the books that they already own and don't buy any books and don't read uh, any library books or anything like that. And I would like to join them, uh, because I have feel like in the last year in particular I've acquired a ton of books, um, and I feel like I should make some substantial dent in that, and that's hard to do when I um, have no willpower when it comes to acquiring books. Um, and so, in preparation for that year of only reading the books that I own, I've been trying to sort of... Um, curate my collection into something that I really am excited to be reading for an entire year. Um, so I got rid of a bunch of books, actually. I've, I haven't been doing videos about that because I find unhaul, unhaul videos to be pretty uninteresting. I've gotten rid of probably about 50 books. I've gotten rid of quite a bit. Several bags full, actually. Um, books that I have read that I'm pretty certain I'll never reread. Uh, books that I owned that I just didn't feel that inspired to read or that I felt like I was keeping on my shelf more out of a feeling of obligation than because I was like genuinely excited to to read them. Uh, and I have been also buying books, mostly online through thriftbooks.com. Books that uh, have been on my TBR forever that I just haven't gotten around to. Um, because I feel like those will be books that I'll be super excited to read next year. And I mean, I'm, I'm excited to read all of these books, but, um, so some of, some of them are kind of individual bucket list books that I just wanted to get into for a while. Some of them are by authors who I want to explore more. And then there are some books about opera and music, which is a, a subject I know I want to explore. So there will be some books on that. Um, then there are several books by sort of, um, civil rights leaders. Um, or just generally sort of books about social issues, I suppose. Um, which is another area that I haven't talked about much, but that I have wanted to explore more in depth for a while. So I have several books on that. And then I also have a general hodgepodge of other books um, that just sort of uh, were very interesting to me. We'll start with the bucket list books. Um, so we begin with uh, The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker. This is a Pulitzer Prize winning work of anthropology, actually. And um, in this book, Ernest Becker argues that human beings are the only animal to be aware of their own death, and that that awareness uh, drives a lot of our behaviors. Um, and I have wanted to read this for a long time because it's actually a foundational text to one of the most important theories in psychology, uh, terror management theory which is based on that premise that humans uh, are the only animal who know uh, that they will die one day and that that motivates a lot of our behavior. Um, and I've read a lot of um, studies on terror management theory and a lot of, you know, articles on the subject, but never read the seminal text. So uh, it'll be good to finally get around to this. I imagine it'll be fascinating. It's not that long. And Search for Meaning by F Victor Frankl. This is sort of part memoir, part philosophy, part psychology. Um, it's in part a memoir of Viktor Frankl's time, uh, in a concentration camp, a Nazi concentration camp. Um, but it's also partly his argument about how humans, um, need to feel some sort of meaning in their lives to feel happy and fulfilled. Um, materialism won't make us happy. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've wanted to read it forever. Two are by the same author. This is, uh, God, a biography, and this is Christ, a crisis in the life of God, both by Jack Miles. Um, so God, a biography is supposed to be a sort of, well, these are both works of sort of biblical exegesis, but God, a biography looks at the Old Testament as though it were a straightforward biography of some person named God. And uh, that just sounds absolutely fascinating, and it won the Pulitzer Prize. And um, of all the book prizes in the world, the Pulitzer seems to be the one that still holds some legitimacy, because most Pulitzer Prize winners that I've read have been quite good. Um, and then Christ, the Christ in the Life God kind of extends that gimmick to the New Testament. So um, anyway, and I've heard great things about Jack Smiles' writing, so really excited to get to go to those 
for Jack Miles and also just because I love reading about religion. Then two more books by the same author. This is uh, Roxane Gay, so this is Bad Feminist, and then Hunger. Uh, Hunger is her memoir of um, her childhood when she was raped at a very young age and that the trauma from that caused her to start eating profusely and gaining weight. Um, and I thought it sounded very interesting when I listened to an interview with her. And then Bad Feminist is a collection of essays about uh, feminism and women in modern society, which uh, I've heard great things about this from a friend of mine, and so I've been interested to read it for, for a long time. And then we have two classics. Um, this is uh, The Book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa. Um, this is a... Pessoa is a Portuguese writer. I think this will be the first work of Portuguese literature that I've ever read. And uh, the the... Subtitle to this book is A Factless Autobiography. It's very sort of um, philosophical, I get the sense, and uh, I actually read an article on this book uh, in The New Yorker a long time ago and thought it sounded right up my alley, thought it sounded so cool. Um, and uh, at least Harold Bloom uh, regards Fernando Pessoa as one of the major writers of the Western canon, so uh, I definitely want to read that. And then uh, we have Livy, The War with Hannibal. Uh, his history of uh, the Second Punic War. Um, yeah, I I have wanted to read Livy for quite some time, and I've heard that this is the best place to start. Now we'll move on to those books on social issues that I mentioned. So um, the first one is a uh, Custer Died for Your Sins: An Indian Manifesto by Vine Deloria Jr. Uh, Vine Deloria Jr. is a is an interesting writer. He sounds very uh, strange and controversial. He said some. He has said or had said in his time. He's he's dead now, but um, he said some strange things about uh, that were sort of vaguely uh, verging on denying evolution and making all these sort of weird claims about dinosaurs and humans being around at the same time, but this doesn't have any of that. This is a book about Native Americans and the United States' treatment of Native Americans, um, which is an issue that I am very interested in. Relatedly, the next one is uh, Prison Writings, My Life is My Sundance by Leonard Peltier. And uh, Leonard Peltier was a an activist involved in the American Indian Movement, uh, which was a, the civil rights movement um, that built up around uh, Native American issues around the same time as the Black Panther Movement and the Black Civil Rights Movement in the 60s and 70s, and he was involved in that. And um, these writings, these essays, uh, this is sort of a collection of essays and sort of a memoir, these were all written from prison because Leonard Peltier is actually still alive and serving out a life sentence for... Um, a crime he committed while he was engaging in activism. Um, and also, this must be one of the most weirdly shaped books I've ever come across. Like, it's super tall. I don't know if you can see how tall it is, and then, like, really skinny. I don't know who printed this book, but anyway, it's an odd shape, but I'm ex this is a book, again, I've wanted to read this forever. Um, and then, uh, Women, Race, and Class by Angela Davis. Uh, I believe Brianna, over at Brianna's Library, uh, praised this uh, not too long ago, and it sounded fascinating. Um, it talks about uh, race and the prison system, I believe, and that sounds uh, super relevant and, and interesting. And um, actually, the book that I really want to read is the autobiography of Angela Davis, uh, but that wasn't available on thriftbooks.com, um, so I thought that this would be a decent substitute. And then, uh, last two are both autobiographies. This is I Put a Spell on You by, uh, the autobiography of Nina Simone by Nina Simone and Stephen Cleary. And I really like Nina Simone's singing. I've been getting more into her music lately. Um, but I also am interested in her life for her work on civil rights. Um, but also I kind of like learning about the lives of artists and such, and I figure there will be some of that in this, so, um, yeah. And then lastly is uh, Asada, an autobiography um, by Asada Shakur, who was a member of the Black Panther Party and uh, I believe was exiled and lives in Cuba currently, or lived in Cuba. I'm not actually sure if she's still alive, but again, it sort of is in that theme of reading um, autobiographies by civil rights leaders, um, which was a genre I, I got interested in reading at one point after I read the autobiography of Malcolm X, uh, but then never really continued with, so this is a part of that. Next section is uh, books about music and opera. So um, we have uh, Bubbles, a self-portrait by Beverly Sills, uh, which was a recommendation from Steve Donahue about a really good 
book on opera, and uh, Beverly Sills is, was a really good soprano. I've listened to a little bit of her singing uh, in the meantime, and I, I really like what I've heard. Um, this is full of um, photos and such. Um, it just, it looks like it, yeah. And it's supposed to just be a really nice look at the opera world uh, and uh, the life of an artist, which I, again, I quite enjoy. Uh, and then the next one is also an autobiography. This is Tito Gobi, My Life. Um, I've been listening to some of his singing as well, and I really like what I've heard. Um, and uh, again, this is supposed to just be uh, a really good portrait of the opera world. Um, and also, again, the life of an artist. So, uh, should be very interesting. And these next three are all sort of collections. So, this is um, The Ultimate Art, Essays Around and About Opera by David Littlejohn. Um, so yeah, some of the essay titles to give you a taste of what's in here. Um, so, Singing Greek Tragedy, um, Ariosto and His Children, Don Giovanni, The Impossible Opera, um, Sex and Religion and French Opera, uh, Whatever Became of the Breastplates, um, What Makes Othello Work, um, The Janacek Boom, uh, and Artists on the Opera Stage. So just a, a miscellaneous collection of essays about opera. I figured that uh, I would want to read some books on opera and music next year, um, so that's why I bought some of these. The next one is another collection of essays. Um, this is the New York Times Essential Library on Opera by Anthony Tomasini. And this is a collection of 100 very, very brief essays on 100 different operas. Um, you know, and it had all all the ones you would expect. It's got a bunch of uh, Bellini, it's got Benjamin Britten, Mozart, a lot of Wagner, a lot of Puccini, and a lot of Verdi, a lot of Richard Strauss. So just all the classics, and I've already read a few of them and I'm really enjoying them. And then lastly, uh, of the music books anyway, we have uh, The Lives of the Great Composers by Harold Schoenberg. Um, and this, yeah, I love little books like this that are sort of collections of uh, lo little biographies. Um, and uh, yeah, this covers all the major composers, and I'm sure I will enjoy this. And then uh, the next section is books by authors who I want to explore more of. So, um... We start with a bunch of Cormac McCarthy, apologies to Steve Donahue, um, this is uh, Cities of the Plain, um, The Crossing, uh, and then we have uh, Sutri. Uh, next is uh, Susan Sontag, I have here uh, Reborn, um, which is a collection of her journals and notebooks, um, and it spans the years from 1947 to 1963. Um, and it doesn't have a dust jacket, so it doesn't really tell you anything, but I actually follow a Twitter account that is just quotes from Susan Sontag's notebooks and journals, and I love it. So it got me interested in reading uh, her journals. Uh, and next, uh, we've got uh, Dostoevsky. This is uh, The Devils, which is also called Demons. Um, but yeah, Dostoevsky, it's... Uh, I'm far overdue for exploring more of his work, so I'll have that to read, as well as The Idiot. Uh, and then Leo Tolstoy, we have The Death of Ivan Ilyich and Other Stories. Um, I have now Anna Karenina on my shelf, and I have uh, Haji Murad. And I, so I can read those, and then I can uh, delve into this, uh, which should be very interesting. Uh, I don't have War and Peace, because uh, I hope uh, a, an angry mob doesn't come storming into my apartment to murder me when I, after I say this, but I'm not that interested in War and Peace. <laughs> Um, uh, but anyway, moving on, uh, next is The Birth of Tragedy by Friedrich Nietzsche, a book by him that I've wanted to read forever and just haven't ever come across a copy of. Um, it's all about the sort of distinction between the Ap Apollonian and Dionysian ideas, and, um, that fascinates me. It's also a lot about, uh, uh, Greek drama, which I love. And then, uh, finally we have two novels, uh, we have, uh, Between the Acts by Virginia Woolf, one of my favorite authors, I want to read more of her, and I've heard good things about Between the Acts. And then uh, we have The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, her Pulitzer Prize winning novel that many people uh, adore, from what I've heard. And then finally we have a category that's just sort of a bunch of miscele miscellany that did not uh, fit into any, any other categories. Um, so the other day I went to a bookstore in the next town over and found a couple books on art. So, uh, this is A Brief History of Painting by Roy Bolton, with an introduction by Matthew Collings. 
And uh, this just sort of um, takes 150 paintings that are sort of representative of the history of art, and just, you know, you just see the painting and then a little very brief essay about the painting and a little brief essay about the artist. Um, and uh, these paintings just, you know, go start in ancient Egypt and go all the way through to the late 20th century. And um, the essays, I've started to read this book so far, I want to read through the whole thing. Um, the essays have been really good. They just um, talk a little bit about the painting and why it's notable and the contribution that it made to the history of art. And I'm just finding it very interesting and learning about a lot of art that uh, that I didn't know about, so this is great. Uh, and then the next one is um, a huge thing. This is American Visions, the Epic History of Art in America by Robert Hughes. Um, and this is gigantic. I mean, like, you could kill someone with this, but... Um, yeah, uh, I just read a few pages of this at the bookstore and thought it sounded super interesting. So, uh, yeah, this should be cool. Then we have uh, Kant, A Very Short Introduction by Roger Scruton. Um, after reading the biography of Nietzsche that I did earlier this year, I actually got interested in reading Kant because of his influence on Nietzsche's thought. Um, but uh, I, I don't know if I really want to read Kant's own writing because it, he sounds awful, um, but I figure a book about him that's relatively short should be pretty palatable and maybe this will help me decide if I want to actually um, read Kant's books or maybe I can just read more about his thought rather than reading his books, I don't know. But also I'm interested in Roger Scruton. Um, he's kind of a, an, a British intellectual who kind of I think sits on the sort of right of the political spectrum. But he's written, um, he has a book, he's written about music a lot. He has a book on Tristan and Isolde and on the Ring Cycle. He has a book about, um, just general appreciation of classical music, which sounds really interesting. And a lot of other books on philosophy. So he's an author I would like to get into. So this is both, I bought this both because I'm interested in Kant, but also because I'm interested in Roger Scruton. And then, uh, this next one is In Quiet Flows the Dawn by Mikhail Shalakov. And uh, this is a Russian novel um, about uh, the Cossacks in Russia and the ordeals that they went through during the, sec the First World War. Um, and I've heard that this is great. Um, and uh, Sean the Book Maniac and I will be buddy reading this late next year. So I am looking forward to that. Next book is also going to be a buddy read. This is uh, The Best Intentions by Ingmar Bergman. And that is the movie director, Ingmar Bergman. Um, this is a novel that he wrote that was also adapted into a film, but a film that he did not direct. Um, but uh, it's just about uh, two people who meet and fall in love and get married, basically, and sort of the twists and turns of their relationship and the way that they hurt each other and how they fall in love and such. And um, yeah, I'm going to be buddy reading this with um, Jason from Chapter and Verse. Uh, somehow he and I have come this far and not done a buddy read, which is kind of crazy. Um, so he and I are going to buddy read this, and we're also going to both watch the movie and talk about it. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. And then the last book is actually not a book that I ordered. Um, this is uh, Devil in the Details, Scenes from an Obsessive Girlhood by Jennifer Traig. And this is a uh, memoir of growing up with obsessive compulsive disorder. And it actually sounds pretty interesting on that score. Uh, however, this is not the book that I ordered. Um, I ordered... The book that I wanted was uh, uh, what, When I Was a Child, I Read Books uh, by Marilyn Robinson, uh, which is supposed to be a sort of memoir, sort of collection of essays by her. Um, it's about her love of reading and also just about her general thought on, you know, America and religion and such, and her, her usual fare, but again, Marilyn Robinson, one of my favorite writers, I want to read more by her, um, but I got the wrong book, so yeah, but I called Thrift Books customer service, and uh, they're gonna send me the correct book, um, but they told me that I could keep this if I wanted to, so, uh, we will see if I read this, but anyway, I will be getting a copy of When I Was a Child, I Read Books, um, and uh, I look forward to reading it, um, but anyway, as always, give your thoughts if you've read any of these books or uh, would like to read any of them, and I hope you all enjoyed. I will go edit this video and then probably go to sleep. It's a Monday night, which is a weird night for me to be filming, but anyway, I hope you... Uh, anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, but uh, I hope you all have a good week, and uh, I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.